I kept thinking about uh, doing this sutta, but this sutta is actually very difficult. It's actually quite quite deep and hard, and I I I didn't think that I was you know prepared to do this. But for the last two weeks, it has been hanging on my mind all the time. Ratana Sutta, Ratana Sutta, and Ratana Sutta. So <laughs> eventually on Friday, I said, no, I have to do this. Whether, whether I will do a good job or not, I'll have to do this. So when we read this through, I think, I think you will actually agree with me that it is actually a good time or the right time or the appropriate time um, to do this Sutta. So um, I think the link was uh, being sent out to um, most of you, if you are on our email list. Um, so you are actually, you should be prepared to have this sutta right in front of you. If you're not prepared, I have made, made uh, sl slides. Uh, I hope that you will be able to see it on the screen or, or your screen, okay? So this sutta is called Ratana Sutta. Ratana means jewel. So this whole, this whole um, English translation of this sutta is called the jewel discourse. Okay, jewel discourse. So let us start. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. So let us all read together, all right? The Ratana Sutta. The city of Vesali was afflicted by a famine, causing death, especially to the poor folk. Due to the presence of decaying corpses, the evil spirits began to haunt the city. This was followed by a pestilence. Plagued by these three fears of famine, non-human beings and pestilence, the citizens sought the help of the Buddha, who was then living at Rajagala. Followed by a large number of monks, including the Venerable Ananda, his attendant disciple, the Buddha came to the city of Vasali. With the arrival of the master, there were torrential rains which swept away the petrifying corpse. The atmosphere became purified. The city was clean. Thereupon, the Buddha delivered this jewel discourse, Ratana Sutta, to the Venerable Ananda, and gave him instructions as to how he should tour the city with the Lecha Valley citizens reciting the discourse as a mark of protection to the people of Vesali. The Venerable Ananda followed the instructions and sprinkled the sanctified water from the Buddha's own alms bowl. As a consequence, the evil spirits were exorcised, the pestilence subsided, Thereafter, the Venerable Ananda returned with the citizens of Vasali to the public hall where the Buddha and his disciples had assembled awaiting his arrival. There, the Buddha recited the same jewel discourse to the gathering. Whatever beings, non-humans, are assembled here, terrestrial or celestial, may they all have peace of mind and may they listen attentively to these words. O oh beings, listen closely. May you all radiate loving kindness to those human beings who, by day and night, bring offerings to you, offer merit to you, whatever, wherefore protect them with the diligence. Whatever treasure there be either here or in the world beyond, whatever precious jewel there be in the heavenly worlds, there is none comparable with the Tathagata, the perfect one. This precious jewel is in the Buddha. By this, as a variation of the truth, may there be happiness. The cessation, that detachment, 
that deathlessness, Ibbana, supreme, the calm and collected Satyan sage, the Buddha had realized. There is not comparable to this Nibbana, Dhamma. This precious jewel is in the Dhamma. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness, four ways of describing the Nibbana. The Supreme Buddha extolled a path of purity, the Noble Eightfold Path, calling it the path which unfailingly brings concentration. There is not comparable to this concentration. This precious jewel is the Dhamma. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. The eight persons extolled by virtuous men constitute four pairs. They are the disciples of the Buddha and are worthy of offerings. Gifts given to them yield rich results. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. With a steadfast mind and applying themselves well in the dis dispensation of the Buddha Gautama, free from defilements, they have attained to that which should be attained arahaship, encountering the deathless. They enjoy the peace of Nibbana freely obtained. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. A supposed deep planted in the earth stands unshaken by the winds from the four quarters. So too, I declare, is the righteous man who comprehends with wisdom the noble truths. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. Those who realize the noble truths, well taught by him who is profound in wisdom, the Buddha, even though they may be exceedingly heedless, they will not take an eighth existence in the realm of sense spheres. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. With his gaining of insight, he abandons three states of mind, namely self-illusion, doubt and indulgence in meaningless rites and rituals, should there be any. He is also fully freed from the four states of war and therefore incapable of committing the six major wrongdoings. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. Any evil action he may still do by deed, word or thought, he is capable of concealing it since it has been proclaimed that such concealing is impossible for one who has seen the path of Nibbana. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. As the woodland groves, though in the early heat of the summer month, are crowned with blossoming flowers, even so is the sublime Dhamma leading to the calm of Nibbana, which is taught by the Buddha, for the highest good. This precious jewel is the Buddha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. The peerless, excellent one, the Buddha, the knower of Nibbana, the giver of Nibbana, the bringer of the noble truth, taught the excellent Dhamma. This precious jewel is the Dhamma. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness. Their past karma is spent, their new karma no more arises. Their mind to future becoming the attached is unattached. Their germ of rebirth consciousness has died. They have no more desire for reliving. Those wise men fade out of existence as the flame of this lamp, which has just faded away. This precious jewel is the Sangha. By this asseveration of the truth, may there be happiness. Whatever beings, non-humans, are assembled here, terrestrial or celestial, come, let us salute the, the Buddha, the Tathagata, the perfect one, honored by gods and men, may there be happiness. Whatever beings are assembled here, terrestrial or celestial, come, let us salute the perfect Dharma, honored by gods and men, may there be happiness. Whatever beings are assembled here, terrestrial or celestial, come let us salute the perfect Sangha, honoured by gods and men, may there be happiness. 
<clears throat> the Ratana Sutta. The English translation is called the Jewel Discourse. So, the Ratana Sutta, of, of course, it was taught, it was actually spoken by the Buddha. And who said it? Of course, it was the Buddha. This is a different slide than yours because I actually changed it at the end. Okay. And then, when did he talk about this? When did he teach this? And where? And why? Why did I decide to do the Ratana Sutta? And I think you read through this, I think you saw my intention. Did you see my intention? Nobody say hello? Did you see my intention of why did I bring up this sutta? Uh, actually, you know, uh, stop teaching the, in the Buddha's words and, and, and go into this sutta. Did you see my intention? Yeah. So why? Laurie, and new Laurie, please. You have turned to have turned up the volume. Turn it up, please. Say again, Laurie. No, nope. can't hear it. You have to find the speaker. Try again, Laurie. No, I, Laurie, did you have your mic on? Maybe you type in the answer. Maybe you type in the reply. Can hear. Okay. Sorry, Laurie. Maybe you type in the. Uh, no, she can't. Disable the chat room. Why did you use a different program? You have to choose a speaker. <laughs> it's always a cup, you know. <laughs> anyway, okay. So wait until they they, they, they they can actually they can do it. Okay, so who said this? The Buddha the Buddha talked about this. The Buddha said this. And when and where and why? So at that moment, the, at the Buddha's time, and in India, there were many, many little, little kingdoms. And the, 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 that, at that time, one of the strongest kingdom was Magadha. And the city, it's the city, um, and then the and the and the king is King Bimbisara. Bimbisara Panpo uh Solo Wong. Okay, Bimbisara. And Bimbisara is actually a very devoted, devoted um, uh, a student or disciple of the Buddha. And at that time the Buddha was at uh, staying at Rajagara, which is a big city in Madagascar. So, and then next to this place, um, Madaga, there was a, a very small kingdom. The small kingdom called Vaji, V-A-I, V-A-J-J-I, Vaji. And Vaji 
it's a very, very pros was a very, very prosperous little kingdom. And the people there are very affluent. But this little kingdom actually suffered a few years of famine because there was no rain. And then the, the capital city of Vaji is called Visali. It, you actually read it from here, from, from the sutta, it's called Visali. And this Visali, this place, for a few years there was no rain. There was a really, really bad drought. Without rain, then there, there was no produce, right? No produce, no vegetables. So without vegetables, there was famine, hunger, a lot of hunger. And a lot of people actually died. And every day there were people who actually died from the famine. And at that time, Vaji or Visali, the city, actually did not have any, any way to deal with so many dead bodies within one day. And you know, you know, in the old ancient Indian tradition, they actually take the dead body to the, uh, the wood pile to burn them, right? But because there were so many deaths that they, they really could not manage, though dead bodies were everywhere. So you actually read it from the little introduction there. So that dead body, the cops, the dead bodies were everywhere in this little little city, Vasali. And according to the Pali commentary, because of so many dead bodies, and dead bodies have uh, corpses have very different uh, uh, energy than than we life human beings, so they attract a lot of evil energy. And you could call them spirits or hungry ghosts. And so, so there was a famine and there was this evil spirits. And because of the, um, the, the, um, the uh, degradation of these bodies, the, the bodies were decaying, right? So then there come a time that there were a lot of uh, um, bacteria or in the, in the old days, they probably didn't know virus, but I'm sure that they had viral infection already in those days. So a lot of uh, infections being spread. So there, then the whole city, actually, there was a, some, some, something like a plague Okay, so, so there was three things happening at the same time. Famine, invasion by evil spirits, and then a plague. And even though this, this little city was very prosperous at that time, but it was being hit by these three, we call, whether it's human or natural disasters, the, the little city could not take it. So the king at that time thought we needed to seek help. At that time in India, there were six very, very famous teachers. And they, they thought, well, we should go and seek help from these teachers and ask them to come and bless and, and purify this place. So people have different idea. And then the Buddha's name also came up. And eventually they thought, well, you know, the Buddha, the Gautama the Buddha um, was very wise, is very wise, and he is very compassionate, and he has tremendous, great supernatural power. And I think we should actually invite him to come. So they decided eventually, they reached a consensus that they're going to actually invite the Buddha to come. But they thought, 
Well, since Bimbasara, the king Bimbasara, uh, is a very devoted disciple of the Buddha, and he probably is serving the Buddha, maybe we should actually go and ask the king to invite the Buddha to come, rather than us going to the Buddha. You know, if you have somebody knowing that person well, you probably think of you know going to that somebody first rather than going to the person right away because you may be you know turned down right the invitation may be turned down. So the 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 the, the king in Vaji actually sent two um, two persons or two attendants to to go and uh, uh, to King Bimbasara and uh, say, Oh King, could you please uh, invite the Buddha on behalf of us to go to go to uh, Vaji Visali to help us to deal with this uh, this um, big issue that we have. But very strangely, Bimbasara King Bimbasara said, "I think you should actually invite the Buddha yourself." Why? Why did you think? Why do you think? King Bimbisara doesn't want to pass the message or the invitation on, but yet he asked the two attendants, you should go and actually invite the Buddha yourself. Put your hand up. Maria said, offered a very, um, appeared to be more genuine. You know, if you want to invite people to tea, you would call them, right? You won't say, you won't say to person A, could you please go and tell person B to come to tea with me? Right, you won't say that because it's respect and dignity and genuine, right? So one has, especially one is actually inviting somebody um, who is so wise and, I mean, he's the wisest person of all human beings. And we are, nothing when to compare to him in wisdom and compassion. So we need to respect that. And we need to be genuine and authentic. And, 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 and because he, he was, he was such, a, such a sage and saint, right? So we needed to respect that. So, so the two attendants said, okay. Then they went to, to actually invite the Buddha. And the Buddha actually, you know, Buddha already knew that they were coming and Buddha agreed. So the two attendants went back to Vaji or Vasali to inform the king that the Buddha will come. But King Bimbisara has told us that he has to prepare the road to Vasali before the Buddha will start off his journey because they, they don't have any connection at that time. So the road to that place is really not, not very good. But anyway, Bimbasara, Bimbasara told the Buddha, I will, I, will, I will fix the road so that Buddha, you can, you can you know, travel safely. So they spent a few days, they spent a few days and to fix the road. And then Bimbasara, the King Bimbasara actually accompanied the Buddha and Vaji or Vasali, the city of Vaji, actually is on the other bank of the Ganges River. Okay, so Magadha or Rajaga, where Buddha actually came from at that time, was on one on the on this side of the Ganges River, and then Vaji was on the other side. So we know that the Ganges River is very wide, right? And it says that in the text, it said, or in the commentary, it says that the Ganges River is, um, I can't remember, I think it's um, three, three, uh, three Joyana wide and five Joyana long uh, 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 a distance from, from uh, Rajika. So one Jonyana, remember that was a long time ago. I, we talk about how, how, how many miles in one Jonyana. Anybody remember? 
<laughs> Nobody. Okay. So, okay. But I have, I have talked about that before. You better say yes. <laughs> okay. So, Joanna, Joanna, one Joanna is, um, there are actually big, medium, or small. Okay. So, here is talking about small Joanna. So, small Joanna is 16 miles. 16 miles. Okay. But there are in, 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 in different commentaries, there are actually different distances. But in the uh, ancient, um, uh, or I, I could say not ancient, in the uh, historical record of Master uh, uh, Xuanzang, he said it was, it's one Juliana is 16 miles. So 16 miles is about 20 kilometers. Yeah, 20 or 20 plus kilometers. So, so they, 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 they traveled, they traveled through, and then when they reached to the place where the Buddha and his entourage, um, the whole group of monks together with um, Venerable Ananda, they were going to cross the river. And you know, you know, um, Bimbasara king, you know what he did when he crossed the river? When actually the Buddha was crossing the river? How he actually sent the Buddha or saw the Buddha off to Dovaji? The, the Buddha actually got onto the boat. You know, in the old days, they had the boat. The boat, um, the Buddha and the entourage of monks and uh, uh, Venerable Ananda, they actually got onto the boat. But the king, the king didn't go, the, the king didn't go with them. The king actually walked into the river. Walked into the river until the water is to his chest. And then he stopped. And he saw his teacher off like that. Would we have that much of respect and confidence to see our teacher off like that? No, we don't even wave goodbye to our teacher. <laughs> right? So, and then the uh, King Bimbasara said to the Buddha, Buddha, I will be waiting here on this side of the bank of uh, 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 Ganges until you return. You see, that kind of respect a, a, a student actually gives to the teacher. And the Buddha says, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sanzai, Sanzai, Sanzai. So, when the Buddha was traveling through, traveling through to, to uh, through the Ganges, rain started to come. And then the whole city, the whole Vajra or the whole little kingdom became clean because the torrential rain actually washed away many of the dead bodies into the river and clean up that whole place. And when the Buddha arrived, arrived to the gate of Vajji, of Vasali, the city of uh, Vasali, and the Buddha told Ananda, actually the Buddha taught Ananda this sutta. He repeated this sutta, the Ratana sutta to Ananda, and told Ananda, you remember this, and now you take my bow, the Buddha's arms bow, you take my bow, you fill it with water, and you go around this whole city. In the ancient, in the ancient days, all the little cities are surrounded by walls and have a gate. So Ananda, you should go around the city, to around the city, and use my bowl, and sprinkle the water while reciting the sutta. And another, of course, did, this, did what the Buddha actually told him. And, and when the Buddha actually arrived to, they opened up the gate and actually arrived inside to, and, and, and sat down in the big hall 
where they actually um, arranged to receive the Buddha. And Ananda returned after the Buddha actually came back and came and sat down. And Ananda returned. And then the Buddha actually taught the audience this sutta, the Ratana Sutta. Okay, so now unmute Laurie, please. And why, Laurie, why did you think that? What is my intention of doing this sutta at this time? Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, thank you. And how, how the people are reacting and also because it's really, if it is happening in the other parts of the world, it, seem, it doesn't seem to be such a big problem for us because it, we, we are so distant, right? And it doesn't really affect us personally. But now it's here, it's here in North America. So um, that is, it's, it's not that I, I, I don't have the compassion for people elsewhere in Hong Kong or in China at that time. Uh, uh, why, didn't I, why didn't I teach the Ratana Sutta? I, 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 just, I just don't know why. I, it just didn't occur to me because at that time I always reminded students to do metta, metta bhavana. Uh, and, and, and at that time, I thought it was, maybe I thought it was sufficient. I, I didn't know. But it's just, it just came to my mind just in the last couple of weeks. It just, this, this sutta actually came to my mind all the time until actually I decided to teach and it, it's gone. So, so bear, in, bear with me if I really didn't do a good job this time. But um, I think we could actually all learn from this. So, so from, from the introduction, we actually learned that the, actually Buddha, um, out of compassion, went to such an affected place um, to help those people. And the, the sutta actually flourish from 2,600 years all the way to now. And we can actually see famine, illnesses, disasters happens all the time. And it's a, it's a, it's a cycle, constantly coming back, constantly coming back, constantly coming back. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that at that time in, in, Buddha's, in Buddha's day, there was a sage and there won't be any famine, there won't be any uh, pestilence, there won't be any uh, disaster or what, natural or, or created disasters. There were. And same as nowadays, there are. So the Buddha was, the Dharma was applicable at that time and so is today, is applicable in this modern time, in our era. Okay, so um, for, uh, for actually um, sharing the Ratana Sutta, I actually um, are using a lot of um, uh, commentaries from a, a few uh, bhikkhus. Um, one of them is Bhikkhu Bodhi, and also Venerable uh, Sandhagavisaka, and Venerable Dhamma Subbo, okay, and a few other Chinese uh, um, 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 monks, and, monks and venerables. So I, I, I wanted to quote them because I, I didn't want, I didn't want, I, I needed to address this because otherwise I'll be stealing Dhamma from them. So I don't want that, <laughs> okay. So Ratana Sutta. Well, I still haven't, I'm still not going into, <laughs> into the, the, the verses yet. So, in the Thera Theravadan tradition, can you see clearly from home the screen? Good, okay. 
These two pictures are taken from Polan. Okay, and so, uh, so in in the Theravadan tradition, the Ratana Sutta actually is a sutta to to for blessings to bring on blessings. And you can hear, you can see from uh, from the verse one here. It says, "Whatever beings are assembled here, terrestrial or celestial, no, from from uh, from verse three, this precious jewel is the Buddha. By this aspiration of the truth, may there be happiness." So that is verse three. So. It says here, may there be happiness. Uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi, actually, he retranslated this. He said, may there be safety, may there be security, and may there be good fortune. And not just happiness. The most important, you, th- you can actually, you can actually contemplate or reflect back on on the on the introduction it's not just happiness that these people these um, people from uh, vaji or visala was seeking they were seeking safety they were seeking uh, a security not just happiness and happiness come actually after being feeling safe and being secure right so I, I prefer uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi's uh, translation of, of the last verse, of the last sentence of each verse. I will talk about that, but I want to bring it up now. So the Ratana Sutta actually is a very common sutta that the Theravadan tradition use um, for blessings uh, because it talks about the jewel the triple jewels, the jewel of the Buddha, the jewel of the Dhamma, the jewel of the Sangha. And because of such a precious jewel, then if one respect, if one listens, if one practices accordingly to cultivate the similar qualities of the Buddha, of the Dhamma, and of the Sangha, one will naturally become or feel safe one will feel being secured, or one will feel being very fortunate, and thereby one will feel happy, right? So that's natural. It comes naturally. So you can actually see from each line of this sutta, it actually carries a very, very deep meaning, very deep meaning. And these meanings and, and this sutta, even though we read it out loud, we remember when we read this sutta or any sutta, the way we read it is actually very, very crucial, very important. Why is that? Because if we are just reading it words by words and not paying attention, not hearing what we are reading, that means our mind is not there. It's only the eye seeing it, the the mouth pronouncing the word. But if we read it and we hear, and we at that time catch one, two words, or one phrase or two phrases, and it, boom, go into our heart go into our heart mind and that is precious and that is the jewel of the Dhamma hitting you at your deepest place and then there because it hits you so so strong that comes that that's why it says by this asseveration of the truth may there be happiness you will naturally develop, you will naturally have this confidence, you will naturally have this demeanor and hopefully some wisdom derived from hearing, pronouncing, and really hearing it and pronouncing it with the heart, 
you will actually attain those benefits. So it's not just mere pronouncing the words or, or, or reading the, the verses. It's really you need to actually listen very, very carefully. And if you are sort of pronouncing them, but part of your mind has actually wandered off, and then you come back and you read it again, and actually that, that is not very, very fruitful. Okay? And at a time like this, now, nowadays, you're at home, I am here, we are doing a Zoom teaching. Why are we doing a Zoom teaching rather than you coming here? Because we are asked by our government to stay home, to protect ourselves, to protect others, to protect the community. Because the less we get, come into contact, the less we will actually spread the virus. But because we are not used to staying home for such a long time, especially you, householder, you're so used to go out, you know, merry-go-round, right? I go to Superstore today, and I go to Wendy tomorrow, and I go to um, Cottonwood Mall tomorrow or next day, or go to the river the next day, whatever, because we're so used of extroverting, physically or verbally. And now we lock ourselves in our little condo or, or house. We are very blessed to be actually living in Canada with such good air and, and you know, so, so much space. But yet, but yet, our mental stability is being challenged by our craving, by our impatience, by our long, so-called loneliness. Loneliness. But these are all the challenges that we actually arouse from our own selves, for our own selves. It doesn't come from outside. It comes from here because there is a certain level of fear, of fear and of um, distraction in our mind that actually become challenges. Okay, so when, when, when we face situation like this with fear, with impatience, with anger, or with any emotion. I tell you, at that moment, that evil spirit, the evil energy, has already started attacking you. Evil energy doesn't just come from outside, it comes from within. So, the situation that we are facing now, we are scared, we are bored, we are angry with all these emo emotions. How are we going to help change, change ourselves in a situation like this? So we need, we need to actually seek protection. Seek protection from home. The biggest protection is actually from our own mind. The biggest protection. But because we are such weak beings, we are very weak. So we need to seek protection or we, we need to seek reminders or we need our minds constantly need to be reminded. Reminded some, something is very precious out there. We need to remember that. And we need to be reminded of. And so, we want to recite this. And we want to study this. And we want to keep this sutta close to heart so that we don't forget it. And when we don't forget it, there is protection. There is protection.
because we actually created a channel, a mental channel from here to the outside. And if we actually so patient and so grateful and so accepting and so mindful and so balanced, we, this channel will naturally be connected to the similar energies. And who have the same similar energies? All the saints and sages that are actually being, being talked about here. The arahats, the four pairs, the eight persons, and the Buddha, the Tathagata. It's all here, the Dhamma, the Sangha. It's all here, okay? So when we understand the recitation is not merely a rite and ritual, it's helping us to open up the mind and to develop certain qualities of the mind so that we actually channel it to the right place, to the right, and, or to the right place, to the right uh, people, to the right person, to the right things and stages. Okay, so it's not merely just a recitation. And remember, if it is just a, merely a recitation, it's merely a rite or merely a ritual, and it's not going to help. Remember, I want to remind the Chinese people. The Chinese are very, very fond of recitation and very used to recitation. They keep reciting sutta all the time, every day. But there is no heart in it. There is no connection. There is no channel in there. It's just a formality. And there, this channel is stuck, it's closed, the gate is closed. Okay? So remember, it is actually very, very important to be, o to, to, be, to be opened and open up and being connected. Connected not with evil spirit, not e with evil energy, but with the jewels of the jewels. You see? It's very different. So, and uh, I hope that, you know, um, after, after reading this sutta, after studying this sutta, uh, we won't, when we are challenged with similar, or similar situation like this, or, or this, the, um, what do you call that? The stay home advice is going to be extended. We won't, we won't sit there and start crying and throwing a, throwing a tantrum and everything. We won't do that because we know, we know it's a collected karma that we are facing right now. And for individuals ourselves, we need to do our part. And if everyone is doing their own part in a wholesome, mindful, jewel-like way, and I'm sure we can actually overcome a lot of difficulties. Okay, so, so this, the, <laughs> I hardly go into the content yet, and it's just the introduction. <laughs> Uh, so the sutta actually allows us to really understand the wonderful qualities of the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And the whole sutta, and the whole sutta is actually talking about the virtues, the special qualities, and the wisdom of these three jewels. And to know all these qualities actually and be inspired by them, it enhances our confidence. It brings on a strong faith, not a blind faith, a strong faith, and, and allow us to actually be, to be grateful and to appreciate the values of the triple jewels, the triple gems. 
Because in order to enhance our faith and confidence, we really need to know where the qualities of the Jews are going to lead us. If the Jews, the qualities of the Jews are not going to lead us into liberation or the uh, 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 decrease of, of sufferings, it's not going to help us. But through studying this sutta, we will come, we will have, we will have an understanding. These jewels, the qualities of these jewels are going to bring such a value to our life or add such a value to our life. And also inspire us to actually strive through every hurdle, every obstacle that we might encounter in today or in the future. And despite the difficulties, and we know that we will be able to, what, at the end of the, of the sutta, it says, we will be able to, uh, to um, eradicate the, the old ones and not multiply the new ones. Okay? So that is actually very, very important, is eradicate, abolish the old, the old karma and not multiply or not create any more new karma. So this whole Ratana Sutta, it, remember, is not merely for recitation. You think Ananda goes around the, 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 the city of Vasali and recite the, the, the Sutta? You try, you try to go around Chilliwack and recite the sutta and see if the viral will, the, will or, or, uh, well, Chilliwack still hasn't been infected, but why don't we try to go around Vancouver and recite this and see if the virus will go down? I don't think it will because we haven't got the heart of like the, the heart of Ananda and the heart of the, entour- of the whole entourage of the monks and most of all, that immense commas- compassion and wisdom of the Buddha. We don't have that. But don't lose the confidence, we could be there one day. So starting from today, I'm giving you, everybody at home, a homework. Every day, print this out or put that into your cell phone. And if you live in a condo, Walk around your condo and read this sutta at least once every day. If you, have, if you live in a house and you go out and go around your house and read this sutta every day, at the end, and dedicate the merits to all beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. And may all beings be free of sufferings. Okay. <laughs> That's the introduction. <laughs> Anybody would like to say anything? Maria. Maria, unmute her, please. Why is it why is it special, Maria? Yeah. Um, I have no issues with staying at home. I'm on your case anyway, but um, we all have, I mean, social media has its good points and its bad points. Yeah. And being on social media, like you are constantly bombarded with what's going on in other parts of the world, and it's heartbreaking. Yes. Yes. Be able to do something. Exactly. There is a lot of meaning behind that. And I thank you for your passion when you put this together. It was quite a very moving um, Dharma talk tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Laurie. Go ahead, Laurie.
to you, and I thank you, Sifu, for sharing this and um, for um, so patiently teaching it to us. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Catherine. Yeah. Catherine, go ahead. Exactly. Yes. And just remembering the quality of the three jewels. Triple truth. Yeah. And also, it will it be possible that we get a PDF because we did not get the email because this is not oh second time for the English class. So is it possible that yes, I was sure. Sure. Yes. Sure. Okay. San Francisco. Yeah. Well, send it to the San Francisco group. Mali, you have something to say? And Mali, and please. Thank you, Sifu, for doing this today. It has been a bit of a Who is that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I wish I could uh, spend actually more time uh, with everybody, everyone. Um, so uh, as you are aware that actually I teach now three, three nights a week. So if you don't mind listening to Chinese uh, instructions for meditation, uh, Wednesday night we have 6.30 starting for meditation and Friday is six o'clock um, meditation. So you can stay on meditation together with us on Zoom also. Uh, on those two days, so you know, at least you know, uh, through a uh, through a long day, at least you you've got a forty minutes or forty five minutes of a downtime to actually settle the mind down a little bit more. Okay, if you don't mind listening to Chinese on those two days, it really doesn't matter. You just meditate, right? You just like meditate on the sound. I think Laurie and Versha actually went on to those two uh, days. Or eat and ever do with the Chinese, so they 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 told me that it's really it's really good to be able to actually knowing that there is a group out there, and we are all meditating at the same time and doing the same wonderful wholesome thing at the same time. Okay. Okay. Now we dedicate our merits. May these blessings extend to all, that we, with all the other living beings, together will attain the Buddha way. May we wish more and more people will encounter the words of the Buddha, study them, practice them, and help themselves to liberate from their own entanglements, and be ultimately free, happy and peaceful.